So I'm so excited that you're here, Ted. So we've been talking across the whole world. So me in Asia, yep. you in uh, Canada for what, four years maybe? Yeah, we phone. first talked four years ago. Sometimes, uh, sometimes that, 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 oh. Is this working? Uh, All right. <laughs> sometimes for hours. Uh, we Hello? Okay, sorry, yeah. So you, you don't do many tech events, right? Yeah. But, you, but you've come here. Yeah, I, I think um, we've been working on chat for the last seven years now, and we're sort of like uh, pigeonholed away up in Waterloo, Ontario, which is an hour west of Toronto, uh, bringing it out. But now sort of the whole world is figuring out chat, and it's sort of coming to this crescendo. Uh, so it felt like a good time to sort of get out and talk okay, about it. Okay, let's get into it. So, so Kick. Um, I'm not sure how many people in the audience really, really know Kick that well. So uh, let me, because I know that you're a very, uh, very modest kind of guy. Um, let me ask you some, some uh, quick questions. So, how many users does Kick have right now? Uh, we just passed 300 million registered users. 300 million. 300 million. That's a lot. Um, what kind of uh, valuation is, does, does the company have? Um, so yeah, so Tencent just invested uh, last summer $50 million at a billion dollar valuation. One billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, one billion dollars. <laughs> oh, one billion, yeah. And it's a big number. So you're a billion dollar company that's doing chat, chatbots, yep. but you're not based in San Francisco, right? Yeah, that's true. Where are you based? Yeah. Everybody. So we're up in Waterloo. Uh, we have about 100 people up there. Um, and then we also have people in LA, New York. Uh, San Francisco and Toronto. Okay, so you're so you're based way out of the the kind of tech hub as we know. Yeah, right? we're based in the land of BlackBerry, so we got to the see land of we got to see mobile very early. Okay, so I mean, how did Kick actually start? Because obviously, chat has become really really big over the last uh, two years, probably. When did you start the company first? Yeah, so uh, I founded the company in January 2009, about seven and a half years ago. And the really cool thing, I was still in university at the time. And uh, part of University of Waterloo is you have to complete these six four-month internships if you want to graduate. And so I did a bunch of those at BlackBerry, and BlackBerry hired 2,000 interns every four months. And they gave us all Blackberries with full data plans. And this is, I started there before the iPhone came out. So I got to live in this like mobile first world, like literally before anybody in the wor world, like where we all had smartphones, we all had data plans, there was no such thing as offline. And sort of through that, saw mobile early, and it was my boss who's like, listen, like, you're really good at this mobile stuff. You should leave and uh, start a company. So, so your boss told you to leave? Like, yeah, I was going to okay. drop out of school and go work at BlackBerry full time. And you wonder why uh, that c company is not doing too good. <laughs> <laughs> he actually warned me I was going to drop it. He's like, don't do that. Go back to school, start a company. This company's okay. in trouble. OK, so you, so you started Kick. Uh, what, was, what was Kick when you, when you first uh, started it? What was the service doing? So we, we actually originally started with music, and then you know we looked at our Blackberries, and music sucked on Blackberry, so what if we could fix that? Uh, but then it became music plus chat, and then it became just chat. But we've always had this idea that when we had music, you could have the music app, you could have the chat app, but if you had both, they could work together to provide this better experience. So you, so you kind of took uh, uh, BBM, which is like Blackberry's kind of uh, secret source then, right? And you, and you put it on all the phones, right? Android iOS, BlackBerry, and others too, right? Yeah. And that was seven, six, six years, years ago? Six years ago, yeah. A long time, huh? So long time. what's changed? What, what's the product now versus what it was then when you, when you first started? Yeah, so Kick's a very popular chat app. Uh, it's especially popular with teenagers. So 40% of US teenagers use Kick every month. Use, use Kick or have Kick on their Use phone? Kick or Actually, active use on Kick. Kick, yes. Wow, Act that's on Kick. a lot of. Which is, people. yeah, like four out of 10 is amazing for sure. So if you have that many you know, you know, people of that age group, um, what are the kind of privacy issues that you have? Because to be honest with you, if you, if you do a search for Kik on, on, the, on the internet, um, there's an awful lot of cases you know, of, like, uh, of people who are, who are targeting kids. Um, so so how, do you, how do you deal with that? How do you balance having a messaging app that obviously allows kids to, to connect and do like positive things versus some of the more dark things that can take place too. Yeah, so if we just back up a bit, you know, what does make Kick so popular? And to understand that, you really have to understand teenagers. Um, so Pew did a study recently and found that uh, two thirds of teens had made a friend online. 
and actually even to go a step further, they asked teens, you know, how often do you hang out with your friends in person outside of school? And a third of teens responded, almost never. So teenagers are spending more and more and more time in these online communities, blogging communities like Tumblr, gaming communities like Clash of Clans, and when they go there, they make friends. And they want to continue that conversation with a chat app that's not tied to a phone number, it's not tied to a social profile, it's just for chat, and so that's where they so all you use can, Kick. So you can get a, an account without needing your, to give your phone number or anything, right? I think it's more you can connect with people without having to expose your phone number. So like, you know, like if I meet somebody on Clash of Clans and we become friends there, there's no way I'm giving them my phone number. Um, and I don't want them seeing my feed or whatnot, so I give them my kick. And this is a trend that's growing, you know, more and more teens, but also broadly people are hanging out in these online communities. And I think it's like it's a big challenge for the industry and, and a really big challenge for us is when you amass one of these big communities, like you're inevitably going to attract some bad people and some bad behavior. And so we get headlines now and then, which are like these like really bad headlines of things that have happened on Kick that like really hurt us and make us feel really bad and really hurt me. And the hard part is, is like this just is something that teens are going to do. And so we're trying to think about what are all the things we could do to make that as positive as possible. And we sort of bucketed it into two buckets. The first being education. Okay, teens are going to do this. What are all the materials we can provide and best practices to teens, parents, and everybody involved in that ecosystem? And then on the other side, what can we do in the product? So for example, we integrated Microsoft's photo DNA service, so all profile pictures go through that. If there's any illegal images, they automatically get tagged and we uh, tell law enforcement. Um, we're also working on tools where the community, we can work with the community, where you know, they say, hey, look, something bad's happening over here, and we can step in, see the bad thing, and then work with them to get those people off the service right away. And then we're also thinking about this sort of privacy versus security debate. Like on the one side, you want super private conversation. On the other side, we want to be able to catch bad guys doing bad things. And the question we ask ourselves is, is it impossible to have both? Um, and we actually think there is a way to have both private and the ability to catch bad guys. Uh, so that's something we're working on as well. So, so in, in terms of the kind of uh, d data that you guys keep, uh, that you can share with like uh, the p police force, what, what, I mean, do, do you keep any data that you can share or is it? Uh, so up? we do keep IP addresses. Uh, we don't keep any message history. Um, the messages sit on the server and as soon as your device gets it, uh, we wipe it because we do think the privacy piece is really important. Uh, but we do have things like IP addresses. So if the if the police need some data, they can ask you, and you can yeah. you can hold it. But after a certain amount of time, if they don't request, it's going to be gone, right? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Let's talk about bots because I think that is probably the biggest uh, topic going on in tech totally. right now, right? So uh, obviously Facebook, you, Telegram. I mean, pretty much every messaging app under the sun has done some form of bots right now. Why should we care about bots, Ted? What's the big deal? Yeah, I think there's sort of two things that are interesting about bots. Um, the first is that like the app store distribution is just completely broken. So, so bots are the new apps? Is that what you're saying? Well, so let me talk about what, what problems bots can solve and then where we think they're going. So on the first side, like if you were to develop an app today and you want to get it out to customers, um, the place you're starting is only a third of smartphone users in the United States download any apps each month. So two-thirds download zero apps. So right away, like you're not going to reach two-thirds of the population, even if you could go door to door and talk to everybody with the best app ever that was giving away a million dollars to everybody or whatever. Um, and when you sort of look at the app store process, it, it, it sort of makes sense, right? You got to go to the app store, you got to find it, you got to download it, you got to put it on your home screen somewhere, you got to create an account for it, and then you got to learn how to use it, and all of this for an app that you might never come back to. The cool thing about bots is they get rid of all of that friction. So step one, you use the app you already have. You don't have to download anything. It's in the chat app. Number two is you use the account you already created. You don't have to create a new account. Um, you just use the one you created for the messenger. And then third is you don't have to learn a new interface. It's just a conversation. So as a consumer, you can dive in right away and immediately know how to use it. And for this reason, we think that bots have a huge distribution advantage over apps. But I think the thing that we're thinking about is it's still very early. I think a lot of people are looking at bots and saying, well, it can just do text, like, you know, text back and forth, like, 
maybe it will be good for customer service, maybe it will be good for, you know, uh, shopping, but that's about it. But we sort of, we think of looking at bots as just a way to deliver text, is like looking at browsers in 1996 as just a way to post research papers. You know, browsers in 1996 and websites in 1996 were just text. And a lot of people could have looked at that like, oh, it's just for research papers. But because websites had such a distribution advantage, the, the browser creators added more and more tools to allow developers to deliver richer and richer experiences over time. So they did photos and then videos and then they had elements that moved around. And before you knew it, like, we weren't really installing PC applications anymore. And we think bots are just at the beginning of a similar trend where at the core, they're just so easy to try. And so the platform owners like Kick will add tools to allow developers to deliver richer and richer and richer experiences to where one day you might not need to download apps anymore. So you're saying that the kind of bots that we're seeing at the moment, which to be honest with you are quite aren't that good, right? I mean, the, the kind of bots that Facebook has right now are pretty basic. It's kind of frustrating to try and buy something and have a conversation with somebody. You're like, I just want to buy like this. I know what I want. You've got to go through all these steps. So, so these are the kind of, these kind of bots are not the future of bots. Is that what you're saying? It's going gonna, it's gonna to go on elsewhere? If you do want to experience a weather bot that works, we do have one of those on Kick. On Kick, right. <laughs> we do Not have one. Facebook. <laughs> really? <laughs> um, but I, I think the, you know, it's early days, and I think you know, in those uh, advantages I listed, you know, no download, no new account, no new interface, a lot of people are taking that and saying, oh, like to order a pizza, you should just write that out. Hey there, I'm Ted. I'd like one large pizza with pepperoni, please. And you're like, that's like 100 taps. Like, I just want to click one large pepperoni pizza. And so that's what platforms like Kick allow with suggested responses. It feels like a conversation. It's like, hey, what can I get you? But it's actually a UI, you know, pizza, fries, something else. So, so, the, so the real beauty about bots is maybe not the bots themselves, but it's the way that everybody's using uh, ch chat, right? So chat is on every single phone. So you don't have to download the new apps. You already have the interface there. Yeah, you don't have to download an app. You don't have to create an account. And that first experience is so natural that you can pull the customer so, so into it, it right I mean, away. it might not actually be bots, right? You could build a website inside the app and just bring that to somebody else. It hasn't got to be a bot. Well, I think bots are sort of the distribution point. But for example, we've seen games on the Kick platform where it will start with a bot, but then it will be like, okay, it's time to, to, to complete the mission. And you click it, and it's a full web, web view that pops up, and you're in like a full immersive, high graphics game right away. And so you're just playing the game. And then the mission ends, and it's back to the bot. So we think the bot is sort of where the experience starts, but it could push you to a, a website. It could push you to a native app one day. It sort of ties everything together. Okay, so you guys have been doing bots. You, so you uh, announced your bot platform uh, two months ago, roughly that kind of time frame, right? Yeah, so we, we first started working on bots two years ago. We called them promoted chats at the time. Um, and that was sort of working with developers. You know, you had to come talk to us, and we would work in a private beta. And what we announced two months ago is we opened up the bot shop, we called it. So we put a bot shop into Kick. It's a place where our users can go and discover all the bots, almost like an app store, but for bots. Uh, and we opened the platform where anybody could build a bot, anybody could submit it to go in the bot shop in front of our users. OK. And what kind of uh, tr traction have you seen? Like, I mean, can you tell us like, how many bots are on the platform? What, you know, what are some of the most popular bots? Yeah. Yeah, so um, we've had just over 6,000 bots created so far, um, which is pretty incredible for us as like a, a small company to see all this developer demand. And, and that is, seems to be just growing. It seems like something clicked, and the whole world just got excited about bots. Um, so that's really exciting for us. Uh, we're also starting to see a lot of different experimentation in different categories, really interesting things in fashion, around fashion quizzes, and in retail, and food, and games, pretty much across the board. We're seeing like really interesting bots. Yeah, so I, I used one of the apps, uh, well, one of the bots that you have, and uh, and it's 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 pretty cool, but it's for a very kind of uh, focused kind of user, right? I mean, are the are the bots on 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 Kick going to be for the for the Kick user base, or do you think that you can use bots to actually expand Kick to other 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 kinds of users too? Yeah. So today we're totally focused on teens. So when we're thinking about who we want to work with, what bots we want to build, what bots we want to promote. Um, it definitely starts with teenagers and what experiences are they looking for. And then from there, we look for partners who know it's early, are willing to experiment, want to experiment, and we work with them to, to build cool experiences. 
So, so that's how you guys have also uh, uh, started to make money too, right, using bots. Because I guess the whole thing about chat is, is chat's everywhere, right? But you don't want to be seeing ads. You know, I don't want to be you know, uh, t talking to you and then some giant ad like coming up. So how do you manage uh, offering a good user experience but also making money as a business? Yeah, so this is one of the challenges. Like when you compare messengers to broadcast-based social media like Instagram or Facebook or Snapchat stories or Twitter, in a broadcast-based, feed-based um, app, it's, you, know, you, you see a list of posts, so it's like a tweet, a tweet, a tweet, a tweet, and then a sponsored tweet, and you keep going. You know, so you sort of read it, you read it, and you're like, oh, shoot, that was an ad, and you just keep going. Um, so it's actually like pretty easy to monetize those services. Every 10th post is an advertisement. Whereas on a messenger, if every 10th message was an advertisement, you would just stop using the service. And so we at Kick were looking for a way where we could get users to actually opt in to advertising. So for example, one of the things we do is Kick Points. Uh, so we have all these virtual items on the Kick platform that our users want, like stickers and smileys and other things. Um, but to get those points, they have to go interact with advertisers, and they can do that once per day. So once per day, they go interact with advertisers who want to interact with our you know, this coveted teenage audience, they earn their points, and then they go spend those points on all these different experiences. And so in a way, it's, it's like the only place, or one of the only places on the internet where teenagers are actually saying, like, okay, I want to see your ad now. Um, so we think that's pretty cool. Interesting, okay. So I guess uh, one of the interesting parts about the, the funding that you mentioned earlier that raised $1 billion, right, <laughs> generation, was that, the company that actually put the money in is uh, Tencent from um, Ch China. So not everybody in the US knows uh, what, what, who and what T Tencent are. But they probably are the blueprint for sort of Facebook Messenger and any other messaging app out there, right? Uh, WeChat in China has sort of 800 million active users, right? And probably like 1 billion plus uh, registered users. So how are you working with Tencent and what they're doing in, in the Chinese market to bring some of that to, the, to the, the markets that you're in? Yeah, so Tencent is a financial investor for us, like any VC would be. Um, I think the cool thing about Tencent is this vision of chat as the next great platform. They are the company that's furthest ahead by far. Um, so in China, there are more bots put on WeChat every day than there are websites put on the internet. Okay, more bots put on WeChat than websites put on the, other, you know, on the internet. Said another way, WeChat is the internet in China. And so for us, when we looked around and we sort of had this, you know, we're working on chat and how does it become a platform, and we have sort of this, you know, it all comes down to these bots, we, we realized that this is gonna be a big thing and we need to partner up. So we, you know, we have this value at Kick, we look at all the options. So we went around and talked to every company we thought was relevant to this space. But from day one, it was clear that Tencent would just be the best partner you know, they really understood chat, they understood the impact it could have, but they also understood that the way it would play in the US would be different than the way it plays out in China. So they became this sort of great sounding board for us. So does that mean that if you guys really uh, take off and reach 500 million users and like go bigger and kind of rival uh, Snapchat in a more intense way, that Tencent's gonna be buying you and setting up shop in the US? Um, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know. Like, it's not something we think about. Like, when we think about chat, we think about chat apps are the new browsers, bots are the new websites. And so just like you had a bunch of browsers on the desktop, we think you're going to have a bunch of chat apps that can run bots, and that these bots will work on all the different chat apps. So we think it makes sense and is going to be great for the ecosystem where you will have all these browsers, all these chat apps, and there'll be Kick and WeChat and all these other ones. Uh, that your bot can run on top of all of them. So basically, if there's anybody out there who's been using bots on, say, Facebook Messenger or other, other, other platforms, your message to them is, okay, it's not great right now, but like we're doing things that are gonna take this way, way further than it is right now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's super early days. I think the cool thing about the Kick platform for bots is it is cutting edge. We've been working on this longer than anyone. That's why Tencent invested in us, is they sort of look to the West and they said, if anybody could do this in the West, we think you guys are the best bet. Um, so if you build for Kick, you're going to get features, new features that allow you to deliver new experiences, probably before any other platform. Um, and then from there, it sort of becomes a, you know, you can take that bot as the other platforms catch up, as the other browsers catch up, you can take it to the other platforms from there. Okay, that's awesome. I have so many more things that I'd 
like to ask you, but unfortunately we're out of time. So thank, thank you so, so much, Ted, for coming and talking to us. Thank you.